Oh, we are running this entire castle on one windmill. One windmill. <laughs> oh my god. I'm a mad scientist, dude. I love this shit so much. <laughs> What's up guys, it's Riantium here, and today we are back in Ark Survival Evolved. That's right you guys, and oh snap, is it gonna be an awesome freaking day? But first, if you guys enjoy what you're about to see, make sure you smash that like button, subscribe for more daily videos, and if you haven't done already, follow me on Twitter, link is down there in the description. So guys, you know what today is, oh you know what today is, it is... Friday, so happy freaking Friday, everybody. It's Friday, Friday, riding on the back of my thigh, the cold, yo, it's Friday, Friday. <laughs> God damn it, I'm stupid. Oh, man. All right, you guys, so welcome, welcome back, and, uh, and yeah, happy Friday. So anyways, guys, figured we'd go ahead and start off today's episode by riding around on the thigh, the cold, yo, seeing what, what this guy can do, because, um... He's gotten some pretty good passive level stats, uh, like some pretty good passive level stats. Let me go ahead and show you exactly what I've pumped into him. So, he's up to 12,219.4 health. Um, let's see, 1,082.2 uh, stamina and 346.1 melee damage and 144.8 movement speed. So he's pretty freaking good. I feel like he could uh, he could stand up to a decent bit of stuff. And granted, um, he took a little bit of damage from the, that jump that I did in the beginning, but oh well. He can he can stand up to it, you know. It's only a thylacolio. He's not he's not gonna he's not gonna die from that that big of a fall. But anyways, guys, hope you guys are doing well. But I wanted to get something out I wanted to get something out at the beginning of the episode, and I'll probably say this in my Skyrim series as well. Let me go ahead and make sure that I'm safe so that I can jump off and talk to you guys. Um, welcome to the, like, 200 new people that subscribed within the last week. Oh my goodness, guys. Welcome, welcome, welcome. You guys are crazy. The amount of support that has, like, exploded across the whole entire channel is amazing. Thank you guys so much for all the support. You guys... I love it. I, I, it caught me way off guard. Uh, I, I decided to look at my subscriber count on Monday, and it was, it was at this point, and then I looked at it, like, later on in the day, and it was at this point, and I was like, holy freaking Jesus. So welcome to the several hundred of you that have joined since, uh, since the beginning of the week. Thank you so much for subscribing, and I hope you'll stay, because we have quite a few awesome adventures ahead of us. But anyways, guys, just thought I'd get that out of the way at the beginning, uh, beginning of the episode. But, guys... Let's go out and see if we can't uh, do some damage with this thing. So, I've got some plans for today's episode, guys. And what do I have planned? Well, over at the old house, I'm talking the one down there in Viking Bay. We still have the old house in Viking Bay, but I went ahead and moved all of our mounts over to the castle. And uh, we need to make sure that we tear down the Viking Bay house over there. That way it alleviates some of the lag whenever we come over there. And um, it opens up some more spawns for resources and dinos and stuff like that. But we've also got quite a few like materials and resources over there that we need to ferry over to the, over to the castle. Now, what I've got planned for today, guys, is I want to get that stuff ferried from one point to another, from there to there. And uh, we need to do that pretty quickly because I want to get electricity up and going through the house. Yeah, I really do. I want to get electricity going through the house. That way, at nighttime, I'm not reliant on torches in my hand because the castle at nighttime, guys, oh my god, it is literally, literally pitch black. I cannot even see like a foot in front of me. It is so damn dark. So electricity would probably be a pretty good thing to get up inside of there. Now, I was originally going to do torches throughout the whole entire castle to keep with like the theme of the castle, but torches inside of the castle and on the outside, I would need double the amount of torches than I would need um, for the omnidirectional lampposts. So we're just gonna do the um, we're just gonna do the lampposts <clears throat> and uh, use electricity. That way, it's more cost effective, and we don't have to use as much stuff. But we'll take some of the lighter stuff with us on the thylacolio. Uh, let's see. Uh, I tore all that out. That's fine. Let's see what's in the smithy. Okay, yeah, we have quite a bit of metal to get. So the smithy, we could probably just dump all of that into our RG. 
once we bring it back over here. But this stuff, I can't imagine this being too heavy. How much do I weigh? 315? How much weight does the thylacolio have? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to leave you out there, buddy. I'm sorry. Let's see. How much weight does he have? 460. Yeah, that's pretty much the amount of weight we're going to be able to carry. Let's see if we can empty out our other blueprint chest just for shits and giggles. And see if we can't, uh, see if we can't take as much stuff over there as we can. Holy freaking blueprints, that's insane. Uh, no, we cannot do that because, wow, we are way overweight. Okay. Hmm. Oh, I know why. We've got these three eggs in here, which I'll talk about here soon. Okay, let's see. Now how much do I weigh? 578. Alright. So we need to dump off just a little bit more stuff. I say we dump off... Let's dump off some of these weapons. We'll come back and get the weapons, because the weapons obviously weigh more than their blueprints. Yeah, that, that'll work. That should be fine. We've got way too many damn pikes. Don't know why we have so many pikes. I didn't even use this long neck rifle. Got swords and torches and shit. Okay, there we go. So that should be good. How much do I weigh now? Four, wow, I still too. I, Jesus, what is on me that I weigh so much? I don't understand. Besides all these blueprints, I don't get it. Uh, I guess we can just put all the armor back, too. <clears throat> I don't know what is going on with my dang throat, dude. Alright, we'll just put all this stuff back, and we'll start ferrying stuff back and forth. But yeah, so back at the castle, I actually went ahead and I put up the fabricator, and I put up the smithy, and a couple refining... I put up six refining forges, I think. Five or six refining forges. And I put up uh, the mortar and pestles and stuff like that. So it's looking pretty good on the inside. I just need a few more things to finalize everything inside of there. And get electricity running through there. But let's see. How about now? Okay, that's much better. I weigh 150 pounds. There we go. Wonderful. Okay, so yeah. I tell you what. Let me go ahead and ferry all of this stuff back and forth, back and forth from here to the house. And uh, then we'll go from there, guys. All right, you guys. So, our starter house in Viking Bay. It's gone. It's gone. It's gone. No, okay. Yeah, I destroyed it. It's gone. It's gone. It's from. It's struck from my brain. It's gone. It's all inside of my RG now. Wonderful. So... The RG is filled to the brim with everything that was inside of our starter house. Literally everything that was inside of the starter house. Um, so we're going to go ahead and fly back on over to the castle and just dump this in a bunch of different mounts. Because they're basically all inside, I don't have to worry about anything coming over to the house and destroying it. That's the perks of living inside of a stone castle. Pretty much the only things that we'll be able to we'll be able to destroy it is a Giga and what a Titanosaur. And last time I checked, that's not a Giga spawn, and Titanosaurs don't spawn out in the middle of that uh, out in the middle of that little area. So pretty sure this house is now impenetrable, which is great. But before we get ahead of ourselves, guys, once I get back there and dump all this stuff inside of the random dinosaurs and everything like that. We need to go out and find one piece of the puzzle in order to get the electricity going inside of the house. And that, my friends, is pearls. Silica pearls, and lots of them. The only problem is, Viking Bay is terrifying. There are megalodons, there are mantas, there are freaking eurypterids, there's lead sickness. I mean, you name it, if it's terrifying, it's in Viking Bay. The only thing that it's missing is freaking mosasaurs and plessies. That's all it's missing, and it would be the most dangerous place on the map. But, uh, but yeah, so I'm not sure if we're gonna go over there and try and find silica pearls. I don't think we will. I wanna say Pelagornis Bay, which is on the opposite side of that cliff, uh, on the other side of the castle. Um, <laughs> the castle, not my castle. It's, it's, it's funny, whenever I tell my friends I'm at my castle, I always have to say my castle and not the castle, because there's two castles. Uh, but yeah, so we'll have to find silica pearls somewhere else other than Viking Bay, uh, because I ain't going down there. Mm-mm-mm. No, 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 no. I might have Ascendant Chiton on, but I am not going down there and getting tranked by a freaking Eurypterid. Uh, so what we'll go ahead and do is I'll scout out Pelagornis Bay, see if there are any Silica Pearls close to the surface, or I guess swim toable, I should say. Uh, swimmable to and stuff like that. And uh, then we'll go from there. So I'll just go ahead and dump all this stuff inside of there, 
and uh, we'll go from there. Oh, but I forgot, we have two horse names, guys. So in a couple episodes ago, we got a couple names for our horses, and thanks to Ashley Darnell, we have them. So the two horse names, guys, and I love this. This is it's something from uh, Game of Thrones. It was Jora and Khaleesi. I believe I spelled Khaleesi's name right. Uh, I'll have to Google it just to make sure. But we got Jora Mormont and Khaleesi Daenerys Stormborn, which I thought was just awesome. And I mean, everyone, I mean, a lot of people shipped those two <laughs> back in the uh, the early seasons of Game of Thrones. But let me go ahead and uh, dump all this stuff into the dinos and uh, and then we'll go out looking for silica pearls. Oh, he's gonna do a superhero landing. He's gonna do a superhero landing. You watch, he's gonna do a superhero landing. Oh, here it comes. He did a superhero landing. <laughs> so if there were any name suggestions for the Griffin, I have not seen them just yet, mainly because I filmed this way earlier uh, than I posted, obviously. I've said that before, but I always like to clarify that for people. But let's see. Any any juicy silic pearls in and amongst these reefs? These reefs? Oh, there are. Oh, I wasn't expecting that. Oh, shoot. Oh, and look at how safe it is. Look at how nice and safe it is. Frickin' eel comes through here and bites my face off. All right, let's see. Uh, where did I, there he is. Hello there, Mr. Silica Pearl. 82 Silica Pearls per, very, very nice. You know, I had somebody comment on one of my videos saying, what is this dude playing on like a times 20 server? It's not times 20, it's times four. <laughs> but yeah, it is pretty boosted. It's pretty boosted. But let's see. Uh, yes, there are tons and tons of silica pearls through here. Good, good, good. All right, so really the amount of silica pearls that we need, since it takes about 300 silica pearls per, uh, per, let's see, it takes 300 silica pearls and 100 metal to make 100 electronics. I would say we need about a thousand silica pearls in order to make 300, yeah, 300 electronics, and that should be more than enough to make the... Uh, at the outlet boxes as well as the electrical cables as well as probably a secondary generator for the top floor um, But yeah, so let's see Any more silica pearls around here? I see you hiding down there. You didn't think I saw you hiding, but I did. All right. How many do we have so far? Oh, hell yeah, that's 500. All right. Wonderful. So we're halfway there halfway there perfect Good stuff, and there's plenty of them here. Okay, well I know where I'm coming to get all my silica pearls from now on. That's great. Alrighty, got myself some gasoline made up. We are good to go. Fabricator has the silica pearls, over a thousand and three silica pearls, and uh, 300 metals. So let's see, composites, electronics, let's go and turn it on. This should make one, two, three. 300 metal. There we go. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So we'll go ahead and let that go while we are out exploring a little bit because inside of my inventory, guys, I have a 28-pound oil pump. I don't know why I decided to tell you the weight, but there you go. Now you know how much a standard oil pump weighs. But uh, we need to find an area to put this bad boy down because uh, I forgot that whenever you jump up into the into the next tier, which is the the fabricator tier, uh, everything pretty much takes gasoline, and uh, that's kind of one of the unfortunate facts of life about this game. Is once you jump up to the next tier, most of the time it requires another resource to keep it going. Same thing with with the tech tier. You jump up to tech tier, you gotta keep element to keep it going, which is kind of unfortunate. But hey, that's the name of the game. So we need to find a nice big oil rock. Hopefully it's kind of close, preferably close would be good, um, but but yeah, a couple of my friends have offered their oil pumps for me, and as, as sweet and as gracious as I am uh, to them for allowing me to do that, we need to have our own just in case, um, but yeah, we'll probably end up siphoning some of theirs just for shits and giggles, because I mean, one of these oil pumps is enough to have basically unlimited oil for life. Like, I'm not even kidding. One of these oil pumps is like 10,000 oil, 10 to 30,000 oil or something like that. It's a little bit ridiculous. It's a little bit excessive. Um, but yeah, so I've seen a few of them over in the snow biome, but I would assume over here in the lava biome, there would be a decent bit of them. But let's see if I'm correct. I know there's a crap ton of obsidian over here. But let me check. Any obsidian spawns are not obsidian. I don't need obsidian spawns. What are you talking about, bro? Uh, I need oil spawns. Let's see. Any big oil rocks down here? 
Um, but yeah, so we need to get one. I've seen some in the snow biome, like I said, but I need to get at least one for myself and remember exactly where it's at. Preferably not in the lava biome. That way I don't have to risk coming over here while the lava is spewing out of the top of the volcano. But it would be nice because we are fairly close to the volcano. But I'm not seeing anything over here. So that's kind of unfortunate. Also, why am I freezing to death? Was I freezing to death or was I dying of heat? I have no idea. I couldn't tell exactly. Okay, I, now I'm freezing because I'm in the snow biome and that makes sense. Oh, hello you Tyrannus. Where are you screaming? Oh, there you are, big boy. Let's not get close. I would rather not get, uh, get afraid of him. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not seeing any oil rocks throughout here. Perhaps I'll find one just randomly flying around here. And then we'll just plop it down. I think this is the mountain... This mountain, it's either this mountain or the mountain, let's see, where's it at? I actually think it's down there towards the other obelisk. That mountain, holy freaking Jesus. No, it is this one. It gets to negative 81 right here. Like, holy Jesus. Yeah, this is the spot right here. Murder, murder, snow is the area. I have seen it get as low as negative 101. And look at how fast my health drops. Look at this. That is dropping one every second every half second let's see yeah yeah that's that's two holy shit that's oh my god <laughs> that's like two points a second that's insanity <laughs> oh my god how the hell do you survive up here that is insanity that is so freaking cold i would never ever 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 try and live up here not to mention the name of the place you're trying to live in is called Murder, Murder, Snow. Holy freaking Jesus. But I'm loving all the mammoth spawns up here. I'm thinking if we want to have a gigantic mammoth army, we can come up here and start it. But okay. Well, it's not looking like our search for an oil rock has paid off. Perhaps there's one down here in this canyon that I could find. Um, I'll probably have to look up a spot where the oil rocks spawn. Um, and then we can go from there. But I thought I'd bring you guys back out and uh, come on a little bit of an adventure with me, you know, because I always love doing that. And, uh, and yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and jump back over to base and get a little bit of work done inside of the house. Um, and uh, I'll bring you guys back in for a little bit of an update. Alrighty, totally forgot that I need a crap ton of crystal in order to make these omnidirectional lampposts. So we got to go ahead and come out here and grab a crap ton of crystal. You know how it is. But let's see if we can't lure some of these dire bears away from these crystal deposits. Let's see, anything down here? Hmm, oh, there's one right there. You thought I didn't see you, but I did see you there, Mr. Crystal. Come here, you little dickens. Give me some of that good old crystal. So, back at the house, guys, I went ahead and put up the secondary level inside of the castle. And instead of making the ground out of stone, which I thought would just look kind of tacky, just because, I mean, the whole entire thing is made out of stone, so there's got to be a little bit of contrast on the inside, uh, I made it out of wood. And so it looks pretty good. And it's got two, two ramps that go up to the top. And uh, that will serve as the, I guess, the double grand staircase, if you will. That will allow you to go upstairs and uh, and stuff like that. And like I said, the upstairs area, hello there, deeper part of the cave. The upstairs area will most likely serve as our grand bedroom, kind of like master bedroom area. Uh, that's where a lot of my like special stuff will most likely go. Probably have my blueprints and stuff like that. Maybe I'll have a library in there with a nice little seating nook, like a little reading nook and stuff like that with a couple benches and all that good stuff and that way that stuff is out of the way and uh, we don't really have to worry about it all too much and then um, it can just be kind of like a nice little focal point of the room you know holy hell how far does this cave go through damn I know where I'm coming to get crystal from now on shoot there's a lot of crystal in here I think that should be enough though and truthfully, we're going to need even more crystal to make us up those greenhouse walls and stuff. How cold is it in here? 14? That's not too bad. We're going to need more crystal in order to make those greenhouse walls uh, for the accents on the outside of the castle. So that'll be pretty good. At least I know of a good spot where we can get a crap ton of, uh, crap ton of crystal. And it's fairly close to the house, so that's pretty good. So okie dokie, let me go ahead and head back to the house. Let me get some of these lights made up, and uh, I'll come back in and uh, we'll lay down all the wiring. 
All right, you guys, so I have a decent amount of things made up. Let me go ahead and dump the rest of this Fibre inside of Mr. Flattail. Sir Flattail, sorry. You are a sir, not Flat, not Mr. Flattail. I apologize. But yes, here we go. As you can see, we got the wooden second floor up. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to extend walls down just like this. And we're going to make this kind of like a drawing room. So if you've seen like a medieval castle um, and what this castle is based off of is actually Highclere Castle in, uh, in Yorkshire. Um, and what it is, is the drawing room is kind of like a waiting room. It's got like nice chairs and stuff like that. It's got a nice little spot for people to, uh, to sit in and chill and hang out and talk to each other and, um, and stuff like that. And what this will be is I'll have, I'll have walls that come down and some glass around the top and stuff like that. And it'll be kind of nice and stuff like that. And we'll have door frames all the way around, uh, in certain areas where you can come in and stuff like that and sit and chill and all that stuff. There'll be lights in here and it'll be right underneath of the secondary level. So it'll be very, very nice. But up here is the second level. And then up top there is the third level, as you can tell. But I wanted to give the third level a little bit of spice and make it a little bit like a loft, if you will. And so that's why I decided to go with these rope ladders. Because a rope ladder just gives me that childhood feel, you know? That, uh, that, that, that attic feel, you know? Trying to go up into the attic and uh, chill out in the loft and stuff. Just seems kind of nifty and seems like it would fit. So let's go ahead and surround this up here because actually what's going to go up here is a secondary generator where I'm going to hide the cables for the second floor, the second and third floor. I'm going to hide some lighting up here and it'll just be kind of like a nice little nook up here. There might be some glass up here. There might not be. I can't. I don't know. I might do some stuff up here, but it'll be kind of nice up here. Plus, I like the wooden railings because it gives it that nice little accent and it makes things look very, very nice. And plus, if we want to, we can roll that up and uh, and just make it make more room and stuff like that. But now for the most important part. Now we need to go ahead and place down our omnidirectional lampposts as well as our cables. Now, the cabling and the omnidirectional lamppost is going to be the most important part because I need to figure out the placement of each each light. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to put a light in each one of these corners right here. For some reason, the, the rain comes in o only in these corners, and that's kind of interesting. I don't know why it comes in only in those corners. So we're going to go ahead and do one right there, one right there, and then one over here. And then we'll do one on the other side as well. Now... The problem that I'm going to face is how bright is all of this going to be with just these four lights? Or how dark is it going to be? Now, before we get ahead of ourselves, let's go ahead and place down our... Let's go ahead and place down our windmill. Now, our windmill should be able to sit out here. Yes, it should. There we go. Now, the problem is... I didn't think about this. We need an extra foundation, I think. Let's see. Do I have any extra stone on our dodic rick roll let's see do you have any stone on you there buddy no stone okay here's what we're gonna do let's grab let's grab some of that actually we don't even need that let's grab that and then let's grab let's grab just a little bit of stone because we just need to make one foundation i think one foundation should be plenty and it'll be similar to what we did on Scorched Earth. If you guys remember how we did that on Scorched Earth in our villa, we just kind of extended another foundation out. Let's see, what, what else do I need for my foundation? Oh, I need more wood. Duh, I didn't even grab any wood, you dummy. You dummy. You stupid moron. Give me some of that good wood. All right, now can I make it? Okay, there we go. Good, good, good. Got myself a foundation made up. And bam. Perfect. There we go. All right, so now, where do we want the foundation to go through at? I'm thinking we want it to go... Let's put it right here. And who knows, maybe we'll extend the foundations out a different way or something like that. I'm not sure. We'll, we'll figure this out eventually. But let's see, what way is the, is the windmill going? I think this way it's facing outwards, which is fine. We might even need to make a second foundation. So that's kind of interesting. All right, now let's see. How do we want this to look? I think this should be fine. Just like this. Let's see. Let's go ahead and do this. Let's line this bad boy up just like that. And we'll push it on top of that. Yeah, that looks fine. And we'll we'll build a second foundation. 
There we go. And now let's check to make sure that it's not going to overlap with anything just like that. Yeah, I kind of like the way that that's going to look. Yeah, I really do like that. All right. And then right trigger. Bam. Just, oh, I'm stuck inside of it. Okay, there we go. Jesus, criminy. There we go. Got ourselves a windmill. And as you can see, we have power generating. And it's cheaty as shit. But I love it. All right, now, now let's see. Let's go ahead and connect a cable, if we can. Can we even connect? Okay, yes, there's the cable right there. Now, the cable, let's go ahead and connect it right, right there. Should be more than good. More than, f actually, scratch that. Electric cable. We don't want too much of the cable sticking out. So let's do right there. That will just be an ugly necessity. And I think that's fine. Alright, so I tell you what, guys. Let me go ahead and put down the rest of these cables. And uh, I'll bring you guys back in for an update. Okay, you guys. So, you wouldn't know it if I didn't tell you. But, inside the corners and inside, like, all along here, guys, is cabling. Like, all throughout here. Like, it's crazy how much cabling there is. Now, let's check out how bright it is with all four of these lights turned on. Or at least how dark it is. Because, unfortunately, at nighttime, it will... our uh, The eyes of the character adjusts to the nighttime. And um, as it allows more light in, it gets brighter. So these lights might actually be brighter at night than they are during the daytime. But, I'm thinking we're going to need more lights. We're going to need more lights, yeah. So, what I'm thinking is this. Hmm. Trying to think... I'm thinking if we put one in the middle of each of these walls, because the way I laid it out, it's very symmetrical. So if we did this, if we went ahead and did this, and put a, put a light right there, and we put a light that ran along this, this area right here. Let's see, if we put a light like right here, the person sitting there is going to kind of be blind, but hey, screw them. Uh, and then we put a light, like, right, right here. Let's see. And this, the lighting upstairs, I will probably have to finish off camera. But, I wanted to at least get some lighting done in today's episode. And then we go ahead and put in a box there. And we go ahead and put in a box there. <laughs> I love hiding lighting. Oh, I mean, I love hiding cabling. It's so nice. Put a box right there, and we'll go ahead and put in a box right there. Perfect. And there we go. And let's see how bright it is now. Now that we have 360 degree light all the way around the first floor. Let's see. Go ahead and turn that on just like that. And I think that's all of them, guys. So yeah, the bottom floor is now completely lit up. That looks great. That looks pretty dang good, and let's see, it's 2009, that's pretty good. That looks very nice. Okay, I kind of like how that looks, and let's check outside and see how this looks with the, uh, the windmill. Now, I'm pretty sure we actually should be able to, to put up a couple railings to make sure that this stays safe. Now, let's see. I think back on Scorched Earth, we weren't able to do this because we didn't have the option turned on to allow structures to phase into each other because that wasn't a thing. But now, now we can actually build a protective box around this thing so that we can keep this protected, which is pretty nice. And we can actually turn that into metal eventually. That way, we don't have to worry about this thing getting destroyed at all. And that is nice. And I actually might even be able to put another couple foundations out this way to protect this box, or to protect this, um, this cable. But that looks really nice. I really like the way that looks. Now, obviously, the test will be how it looks at nighttime. Um, but the windmill, I like the way that looks. Aesthetically, that looks really good there. You know, I was really worried that it would take away from the aesthetic of the castle, but I think it adds to the aesthetic of the castle. I actually really kind of like the way that that looks. Now, we could add, we could add, um, more windmills for, um, symmetry's sake, but that might not be, might not be necessary, truthfully. But the lights, guys, this looks very, very nice. Now, what I'm very curious to know about is whether or not the boxes downstairs are going to be enough to reach up here. But if they're not, that's why we're going to hide lighting up there. But look at this. The lighting even reaches up to here. 
But let's see, just for shits and giggles. Oh my god, it reaches. Are you serious? Oh my god, we might not even have to hide more lighting. Oh my god. Oh shoot, dude. We might not even have to put more... We might not have to put another generator up there. I think we'll be okay. Oh. Baby. Yes. Oh, we are running this entire castle on one windmill. One windmill. <laughs> oh my god. I'm a mad scientist, dude. I love this shit so much. Oh, it looks so freaking good. Let's go ahead and pound some berries into my face so that I don't die. You know, I've been surviving off of raw meat and berries for like the past three days. I have literally not cooked a single piece of meat, but that's going to change once we get the industrial grill going. Oh my god, that is awesome. Well, guys, looks like the power has been restored and everything is pretty much great in the castle. Oh, this is awesome, guys. Okay. Well, guys, I think I'm going to go ahead and end off today's episode right here because with the inception and the creation of power inside of the castle, I can now work 24-7 round the clock around the castle grounds and inside the castle to make this thing look even freaking better, guys. So, I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. And if you did, make sure you smash that like button, subscribe for more daily videos, and if you haven't done already, follow me on Twitter. And I will see you guys in the next video.